Okay, so this is uh, part two. Welcome, everyone. This is Turn Your Show Into Cash, and this is all about the co-op collaborative. Now, producing your show is, you know, it takes a lot. You know, you need to choose the right guest experts. You need to choose the right support mechanism, the right sponsors. You know, there's so many things that have to be right, and they have to be in sync because it has to support you as well as the people that are coming on your show. They better have a really good reason to come on your show. You're asking them to share their expertise. You're asking them to give up their time and their knowledge. You know, if they like you a lot, that's wonderful. But don't you want to make sure these are people who want to be with you and support you and you want to support them at the same time? That's what this is all about. You want to take a sip of water here? Okay. So now, having said that, I'm going to go ahead and go full screen because what I'm about to share with you is, is really the foundation of building a solid TV show that can not only continue to produce, but continue to prosper. And these choices are going to be really important. A lot of it has to do with your mindset. So I'm going to go over my shoulder here, the old familiar so the co-op marketing, knowing the difference between sponsors, affiliates, and joint venture partners is key. Now, I will tell you that I have, uh, in my excitement of seeing possibilities of working with people, and uh, just because I saw how it could work, it doesn't mean it was the right time for them, or they saw how it could work. Sometimes we get excited about what we have, and uh, we approach people because we're sharing something or other. Maybe it's the, the products go together. Maybe we're, we're actually targeting the same, um, same clients. You know, there are commonalities. But they need, there needs to be a lot more than what you think could happen. You know, if you're approaching somebody because they have a huge list, well, how is it going to help them? Is it a match? Do you have a relationship with them? These are some of the things we're going to be talking about right now. So here we go. All right. Now, what I have learned, and actually I'm going to go full screen with this because I want to make sure this shows up real big. What, what I have found is that when you are launching a program or a product or a TV show, anything, you, when you're looking to, um, to actually get others involved in a promotion, there are three categories. I call them the investors, the opportunists, and the promoters. Knowing the difference between the three is key. If you approach with the right one with the wrong deal, it's not going to work. If you approach the wrong one with the right deal, it's not going to work. It has to be a match. Now, uh, what, I, here's, what I have found is that uh, there are three different stages. Now, one, at the beginning, at the beginning, when you're first launching your product, you are in the investment stage okay these are people the work that you the people you're working with they are investing in you let me see okay there we go it was a little bit off okay when you're first launching something you don't have a track record anybody that comes to you and starts working with you they're actually investing in you as a person your track record with a, a previous product or something else that you have so these are the people that you must approach if they know you and like you and believe in you right so the next level the next group of people that, that show up are the opportunists these are the people that will invest in your program these are you know the early adapters these are people where if you have a program going and it's the right thing for them they're like oh yeah i'll try it and these are people usually who have a following you know, they, they probably have a following and they're, they're like, like I said, the early adapters that they, they, they like to talk about things. They like to be the first in things. So if you know the opportunists, you know, they, they're not, they're not going to be loyal to you. It's about them finding the next shiny object to get out there and make money with it or make a name for themselves. There is, there is a reason why they do everything they do. It could be just because they want to be the first, you know, or maybe they just want to test something. Uh, maybe these are the, 
uh, the journalists that are out there that want to be the first to actually, uh, you know, test a product or talk about a product. So these people, uh, they will invest in your program. I mean, they could be investing money, they could invest their time, they could invest their resources, they could invest their credibility, they can invest their name, but it's all about them investing in your program. So don't try to bring in your personal relationship, getting them to do something because mentally they're not there. They're about business. Okay, so the next group of people that you're going to be coming across and the promoters, they invest in your results. Now, these are people when you're having conversations with them, they're going to ask you, well, what are your conversions? You know, what do you have? Well, how, what is how, what happens stage one, stage two? They want to see the stats. They don't care about anything else. They may like you as a person, but this is the total business person okay their their word their, their, their main concern is the results you're going to get are your people getting the results are you is the money coming in what are they going to get so when you get to them you have to have the stats so i hope you can see by now the the importance of this because i have made a mistake i think i'll give you a perfect example i actually um, knew somebody for many years and he knew how brilliant I am and all that stuff that goes along with it but he is a promoter you know he is a promoter that's who he is and he was showing up in all his languaging he kept saying well what are the results where are they and um, because I knew him because he knew he knew me and how brilliant I am I kept missing the languaging so they invested. It doesn't mean they don't believe in you. It just means that they're interested in the results. Okay. So um, and then, and once that once that happened, I started looking at different relationships and different people I approached. And so and I saw you know what there were some really good possibilities. But if I had approached that person at this stage, it would have been a yes it would have worked out. So I know, you know when I started talking with other people, I know a lot of us have made this mistake. It is a huge mistake because it can cost you a lot of time, it can cost you a lot of money, it can cost you relationships. And uh, it's mostly in a personality, okay? It's mostly in a personality, that's who they are, okay? So when you're careful with that, some amazing things will happen. So now having said that, now that you know uh, that, you know, the joint venture partners are the ones who will invest in you. The affiliates are interested in the product, in the program, the new things that's coming out. And the sponsors are the ones who invest in the results. And they may or may not have a personal relationship with you. You know, just like, you know, Nike doesn't care uh, who the stadium owner is. They just care that there are 100,000 people who wear sneakers are in that stadium. They want to be in front of them. It's all about the results. Okay, so now having said that, let's take a look at how do you figure out who they are? How do you put together your co-op collaborative to get the results you're looking for? Now, if you've been with me in any length of time, you know that I've been using the wedding industry as the example. You know, you want to take a look at who supports the couple, like right from the beginning as they're getting married, and here are some of the results. You know, you get the wedding planner, the videographer, the photographer, the jeweler, invitation vendor, limousine driver, reception halls, the baker, the caterer, the florist, bridal shop. And a travel agency. I mean, you've seen me use this example because, I mean, everybody knows about a wedding. Either you've gotten married or you know somebody who's getting married, you've gone to a wedding. So you can totally understand that this couple is supported by all these people. So let's take a closer look at maybe individual suppliers. How would they be going around choosing their own? Like in this example, I chose the florist. The, the florist actually works with the wedding industry, right? But if, you, if they, you take a closer look, the florist doesn't need to be working with all of them. The, if you just take a look at who are the six people, the six industries really, that, that would be working for me, what you're gonna end up with is like in this case, the florist, the wedding planner, is a great one because weddings, you know, they use a lot of flowers. V, you know, videographers and photographers, they're pretty much at every event, whether it's a sweet 16 or any kind of, uh, you know, engagement or graduation parties, birthday parties, anything, you pretty much all of them, videographers and photographers are, are there. And pretty much all of them will have a caterer and, a, you know, they will all have a cake 
and they will be needing a reception hall. So if the florist develops a relationship with these six industries, then you know they can be referring business back and forth all the time. So you don't have to go investing a lot of time into, into people just because they're around. Doesn't mean they're the right ones for you to work. You wanna you wanna get the the, the highest return for you and at the same time you want to be able to make sure you're able to refer back with them so in this case the florist could be referring easily to the the, the catering hall that can be referring business the baker all of them okay so you see it has to go both ways so the most powerful ones now let me show you how i'm using it in my business how i'm choosing it because this is also going to affect most of you you know your speakers authors coaches and consultants so you know, my, I'm working with speakers, authors, coaches, and consultants. And so uh, we have the mindset, we have the image consultant, videographer, video, video producer, social media expert, business consultant, publicist, uh, publisher, uh, TV producers. Now, all of these are good fits for me to work with. Now, if I'm working with the core people, you know, for training, training the speaker, author, coach, and consultant to go to the next level to create their videos, then I don't really need to be speaking with the TV producer or the publisher or a publicist because that's level two. Initially, if for my training programs, there's somebody in mindset, you know, working with them and, and an image consultant, you know, to do the makeovers and, you know, have a polished look, the video producer, uh, social media expert, the business consultant, because everybody who starts working with me to get you, to get their TV show, they need the foundation in place to actually launch the show, make sure it's successful, so they can support the same clients I am. Now, once they get things in place, everything's in place, then they can go to the publicist and the publisher and the TV producer. But the core people are those. Now, it doesn't mean I can't change, put some other ones once I shift the focus. If I focus on just, uh, let's see, work, working with authors, then all of a sudden, the, the publisher, the publicist, and the TV producer become really relevant because then we're, we're doing uh, book tours and we're doing, we're doing book promotions. So knowing who it is that you're focusing on is the key. That's when you're going to choose the right collaborative. I hope you guys get the power of this because if you focus on the right ones, then you're not, you don't have to manage a lot of them. And if you focus on the right ones, they will be managing their own. So in this case, the video producer, if I choose the right video producer, they will be managing the script writer. They will be, oops, let me go back. They will be managing the script writer and somebody who will shoot the video, somebody who will edit the videos. I don't have to manage them if I don't want to. And if I want to put on the show and how to produce your TV show, all I have to do is get the video producer and they can get me the rest of the people. So I don't have to go looking for people. And the, another reason why you want to do it this way is because, um, you know, birds of a feather, you know, the people that we work with usually have, you know, the same level of communication or they, 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 we, we're in sync. You know, we support the same people and it goes a lot smoother. So, you know, if they're, if they care about how they produce the video, I'm going to assume that, the people they work with, the scriptwriter and video editor, are also the kind of people who are going to care about how they produce the video. Okay, you guys get this, right? So this is really important. Now, once you have this in place with the right people, it's going to be so much easier because there is a trust factor in place that people don't have to worry about sending somebody over to you. You don't have to worry about sending somebody over to them. So take your time and choose people wisely. Now, once you have done that, the next thing you want to be able, you want to do is uh, okay choose your co-op marketing partners. So once you have chosen your co-op marketing partners, how do you approach them? Okay, and by now you should have uh, you know your spiel, if you will, your plan in place, and you know hey this is what I'm doing. I'm producing a TV show, and um, this is what the TV show is about. And here, here you can share some about it. And, and here is who I'm marketing to. Here's the audience that I'm looking to get on that show. And this is why I want to get that audience for your show. And this is in your module three, identifying your most profitable audience, your most profitable customer, knowing a lot about them. So that's going to give you a lot of insight as to who you're marketing to and how to explain who you're marketing to. Then you're going to say, well, here's where and how I'm marketing to them. Well, in module nine, 
we actually talked about uh, the, you know, the vortex that you know, Gina Guadio Glaive's uh, uh, marketing funnels, if you will. And next week, I'm going to be talking a lot about, uh, you know, repurposing your content, multi-channel publicity. So you're going to have a lot of information. And um, now here's how many leads I'm expecting a month. This is something that you have in module eight, the business growth calculator. You know, because if you know that you're going to be needing to get 500 leads a month or 1,000 leads a month, you know your numbers. And knowing your numbers is the key. Once people see that you have a plan in place and you have a strategic implementation plan, then it's going to be really easy for them to, to really join you, to, to understand what it is that you want. And then they're going to say, yes, if you're looking for sponsors, it's going to be a lot easier to do that. So the next thing will be is like, hey, they're also looking, you know, for your help to be successful. They need your help to be successful. Do you want to market together and share the leads? It's that simple. The question is that simple. Okay. So, if you have done your homework, if you have chosen, you know, the people carefully that you're going to be approaching, if you have really, to, you know, looked at, is this the investor? Is this the, uh, you know, the opportunist? Who am I approaching? And you approach them with the right message. Because if you're approaching, uh, let's say, the opportunist and they're looking to, you know, to do something new, they're the early adapter and say, hey, I'm watching this new program. I'm going to be doing uh, this whole launch about it. And if you want to go ahead and test it and talk about it, I'm going to, I know I will put you in my videos and I will be marketing with you as a spokesperson, for example. So approaching the right person is key. You guys get this. I hope you're taking notes. and we'll, I'll be taking questions in just a second. Now, next we're going over here. Next we're going to go to uh, packages. Now, a lot of questions I get are, well, I don't know what to, what to offer people. Uh, I don't know what they will go. Well, let's see now. Okay, so a lot of them they, they start talking about uh, how to how to uh, sorry I got, got people joining in uh, and distraction here. So I mean, I'm going to go full screen. No, oh, we'll just go over the shoulder here. Okay, so a lot of people start asking about sponsorship packages. They're, what do I ask? What do I put in a package? What do I offer people? Well, the example I'm giving you is something that can work very easily for you, and it's something that I'm actually using myself, you know, for, for the launch I'll be doing next, uh, in the next couple of weeks, right? So what you do is start with pretty much every, actually, I'm going to go full screen here. Let's go full screen. now. If you start, let's say a thousand dollar sponsorship package, okay, something really simple, and you can ask for three thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, doesn't make a difference. Ask for whatever you feel is going to work for you. But in that sponsorship package, you you want to definitely include a three minute interview that you're going to be putting in your show, and you can then you actually offer to give them the three minute interview to them. You give them to your sponsor so they can put it on their website. Now, this is really important because you're talking about not only interviewing them and putting them on your show and promoting your show with them in it, but you're also giving them the video to put on their website. That means they're going to be able to promote themselves. I can tell you that there are a lot of people who are offering to do three-minute interviews for $3,000, $5,000 just to go into the studio and do a three-minute interview, and they, you know, people pay that much. So this is a, you know, basically a $1,000, $2,000, a $3,000 value to, to do that interview and give it to them if you, if you make sure you're doing it the right way. Now, you will also do a 15-minute or 30-minute interview for your members area with the link going to their website. This is also important because if you're going to be promoting your show, then people are watching the show. They're going to want more information about this particular guest expert that you have. And sending them to your members area for them to watch the in-depth interview, a 15-minute or 30-minute interview, that's going to give them more positioning. That's going to give more information about who they are. And people are more likely to want to go 
to their website if they if they want know more about it. So think about it. Now people have watched your show, watched their three minute interview, then they have taken the time to go to your members area to watch the rest of your show. So you are basically creating a very qualified um, clients for them. This is pre-qualified client that you are sending them. Very, very valuable. And if you know how to explain this, they will understand it and they will really know the value of it. So next, you want to put their logo on your website. So uh, the logo on the website, you know, it doesn't, you know, you can decide how long you want to do it. If you have very few people you're working with, you leave it there for three months, six months. If, there, if this is a big company with a name, then you leave it there. If it's going to serve you, you leave it there longer. But as you get more sponsors, then you can't leave 50 different logos on your website. So then the logo on the website, you can move into the page where their, where their uh, show is listed because I'm assuming all of your shows are going to have their own pages and where people can go watch, you know, in the archives, right? And of course, social media campaign integration. This is where you're actually going to be promoting the show. Of course you are. And you're going to be taking a segment uh, with the interview that you have with them and market that interview. You know, coming to next Tuesday, you know, the, the expert, whatever their expertise is, the, the, uh, is going to be on, you know, in my case, the access to experts. So we, we actually going to be taking interviews, segments, you know, int interviews, th three seconds or five seconds from the actual interview and turn it into an ad on Facebook or LinkedIn or Hulu or wherever else we decide. Okay, so this right there, $1,000 package, I mean, very valuable package. If you know how to explain it properly, if you plan it properly, they will say yes. And you have to think about this. You want to make sure you are putting together the right package for the right person. There are variations to this that you can adopt, but you definitely want to be doing it. So now, let's see. I'm just going to go ahead and go over the shoulder again. So here are some some ideas. There are different ways people can show up for you. So there's a, you know, there can be the show sponsor I was explaining just a minute ago. There can be segment sponsor. Segment sponsor is like this segment was brought to you by. Now this particular one, you can actually have 30 second, you know, uh, commercials and things like that in them. There are different ways you can you can position them. This, they can give them a special guest segment co-host positioning okay so this is where they're actually with you and, and you're giving them position of the guest co-host for this particular show which i think is a great idea you know especially in the beginning when you're launching your show to have guest co-host and uh, it's a great way for you to see how you interact with them and uh, then gauge how much your audience likes them and, and the interaction with you and there's a you know the 30 second video tips you can have you can offer to put that in there uh, 30 second video tips are very valuable and you know like I said we're we're looking for 30 second video tips because we don't want to use 30 second commercials within the show before the show and after the show yes but not within the show and so in this case you can actually offer to put that 30 second video tip within your show as part of the sponsorship package then you can have product placement where you can you can have their product that you're using you know within the show if they're you know for example somebody's uh, uh, has cameras or special lighting kits I can actually have it within the studio and show the label of the light or or have a, a, a mug you know with their with the name of their their company or there's all kinds of ways of um, using their products and uh, you know, so product demonstrations. This is a great way when somebody comes on as a guest expert, they demonstrate their product. That's a great sponsorship, you know, segment because that particular video, they can, it's a demonstration on a TV show of their product. It has many uses for them. So that's a very, very valuable component of your sponsorship package. And logo on the website, logo on the show segment set. I just explained that in just a second. So you do have many choices. And again, integration into social media campaign. So well, these are the thing. Uh, things you can actually get paid for, put it within the package. But you're also going to have a lot of opportunities for in-kind sponsorship. In-kind sponsorship, instead of them giving you cash, they're actually giving products and services. So basically, here are some ideas. You can, you've seen this a lot. You can get your wardrobe. 
by a particular designer. Uh, you can get jewelry, makeup, perfume, transportation. You can get the airline tickets. You know, you've seen it, you know, transportation provided by the name of the airline or the car company or the limo company. And um, hotel accommodations provided by. You've seen this happen all over. So there are all kinds of local, you know, small uh, hotels, motels, privately owned that would love to sponsor. And uh, even the, the local Mercedes dealership. You can actually say, go to them and say, hey, you know, I'd love to send my people to you. I get a lot of people up from out of town. I'd love to send my people to you. Now, can, uh, you know, can I just put your logo up there? Can I, can I send my people to you? And they will say, yes, they definitely will. So studio production, you know, production teams, and they're looking for, they're looking for uh, referrals. So the production studios are a great one if you're going to be producing your show because chances are most of the people you're going to have on your show are people who also want other videos. And if they're in the studio, they will create more. Okay, so this is a co-op marketing collaborative, and uh, I am going to, I don't think I have anything else here. No, that's what I wanted to share with you with this one. So this is it. This is it. That's how you put together your co-op collaborative and do your co-op marketing. So I am going to go ahead and uh, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and stop this training video and start another one with the questions from our cast members.